are you, sir? I'm sure you're, uh, did you just come in town? Where, where, where are you living? Uh, I just came in town this weekend, and I'm living in Columbus, Ohio. Now, are you a big Buckeye fan? I am now. Uh, <laughs> since I, well, it only I was basketball. Yeah. Really, I had to hide it because after uh, I started getting good in uh, basketball, they didn't recruit me. Uh -huh. So all my friends hated them. But my mother loved them. My mother loved this announcer named Jimmy Crum, and we used to have to sit and watch Ohio State basketball uh, when it came on television. And I, I thank her for that because that probably kind of pushed me into that direction. So when you were, you're talking early 60s, when you were watching on TV or, or before that, like like, like who, who who were who were the good players then that Ooh. that you followed? Mel, no, he went to the same high school I did. Joe Roberts went to the same high school I did. John Havlicek, John uh, Jerry Lucas, Larry Siegfried, uh, uh, Bill Hoskett, uh, all kind of. Uh, Dang, I used to know him right off the bat, but I'm getting old. I understand. Uh, so tell me about, so you don't, do you pull for the football team? I know it's big up there right now, or do you kind of, you're not a big football guy. I, I became a big football guy for Ohio State when uh, one day we were kids. I must have been about in eighth grade. And uh, on Ohio State's campus, the men's gym must have had like about 22 full courts. Mm -hmm. And no one was in there. And we as kids, we cut through there and saw basketball, and we were playing basketball. And the uh, security guard was going to put us out. Mm -hmm. And Woody Hayes just happened to be coming across. And they were escorting us out. And Woody Hayes asked him, what are you doing? And he said, well, we're putting these guys out because they're in here playing basketball. He said, well, there's nobody in here. Let them play. Yeah. So I became a big Woody Hayes fan. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Boy, he was quite a character. Wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you and Steve were talking off the air about your time as, as head coach at Holy Rosie, and you said something that I, if you think kids are different now, they're, I mean, then, then they're even more different now. I know. And, and, and it's, um, it's funny how we have these ideas of how things used to be and how they are now, but you said something that I think is so important that the thing that struck you is how the kids that you coached didn't quite have the – the school loyalty that you had when you were a kid in high school and, and then at, in college. Right. And not only me, but even all the schools that I played against in the city league, there was a school pride and a teacher pride. Mm -hmm. You know, teachers were like your uh, extension of your parents. Right. I mean, you know, they could crack that whip and uh, they really loved what they were doing. And I know teachers still love what they're doing, but the kids are, are, are different. I guess they got so many things to do. But there was a, a, a neighborhood and a school pride that I, I don't see. And I, 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 you know, I don't know whether the kids, it's because kids doesn't go, do, do not go to school in their neighborhood or, or what's the problem. But Still to this day, my friends, I mean, they still talk about our East High School with right. pride and distinction. Well, I'm a big rivalry guy. And, uh, you know, it's hard. Like, I do a show the next hour with Billy Rickman, who played at Louisiana Tech. And we joke each other. He played for the Falcons. I'm a Saints fan. So we joke. And, and um, I, I, in basketball, I think. Now, look, Big Dave and I were great friends when Big Dave was living, and, 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 and I loved him. But but I think AU, the AAU mentality, I call it, had something to do with that. I mean, you're all playing together during the summer, so that school pride during the school year, to me, that kind of kind of faded a little bit in that era when they were all playing together. That's why I hate all that crazy stuff that's going on in the NBA right now where you got, I don't know, I you know, going to – to the Warriors and teaming up and all that. I don't know. I've just uh, never gotten that. Me either. But <laughs> uh, AAU is, is uh, and I, you know, when I say things, I don't, I know I'm not saying all AAU. Right. But a lot of AAU teams are really kind of spoiling it. You know, because when I was a kid, we would walk from the east side to the north side or mm -hmm. from the north side to the east side and from the east side to the west side. And we would play the best in their neighborhoods. And as a young guy, I had a coach, and his name was Frank Wade, and I used to do a lot of talking. And he told me, he said, well, Bo, 
if you're as good as you think you are, you're not going to have to talk about yourself. Other people will talk about you. Right. And I took that to heart. And uh, just things like that, how people in other neighborhoods and your whole neighborhood was your parent. Mm-hmm. And I, I I I think that's missing now. You can't even touch a kid. I used to get neighborhood whoopers. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's a lot more kids that need neighborhood <laughs> whoopers these days, Coach. We're speaking with uh, Bo Lamar, and he will be at Blackham Coliseum tonight. Look, I I can only imagine what it's like. I'm, I'm sure you've been there a tons of times since you played, but when it's been a while. I don't know how long it's been since you've been. Well, when it's been a while and you're away and then you go back, it's got to still feel cool when you walk in there. Yes. I, I remember the last time I was I was here and they were re- getting it ready for them to play in it. First thing I saw when I came to the door was a guy with a shovel taking out a dead rat. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I heard Steve talk about it, and one of the things I like the most about Coach Marlin is he kind of gets that, okay? Obviously, you know, I wrote a column last year when they played in there in that that game against, um, who was it against? Uh, the team that eliminated him in that postseason tournament in, uh, from the Missouri Valley. But, they, but I said, look, I grew up at Blackham, and I love it. I mean, it's time to move on. I mean, you just have to move on. I get that. You have. We have to put all that. Oh, I wish I, I worked with a guy, but I wish they still played it. But they can't be playing at Blackham right now. It's just not part of the deal. But that doesn't mean you can't embrace what, get it. So Coach Moreland knows you got to move on, and they are moving on, and I haven't seen the new Cajun Dome yet, but they say it's going to be fabulous. And yet, I love that he still, like you, you and Steve talked about, it, embrace the pass. And tonight, if you get, you're going to be able to, you get to meet him, get to sign autographs, and if you're old like me or older than me, um, you get to enjoy it. Right. Uh, I like what Coach Marlin did, and and for UL to continue to be successful in the future, you got to have the people that's in the past. Right. You got to have them involved in what you're doing. And if you look at all the major schools, I look at Ohio State on, on every Saturday that I can watch them play. They always have their ex-players back. Yeah. And I think he's working in the right direction to do that. I, uh, you, one of your old coaches, Tom Cox, by the way, his grandson is the, is the uh, quarterback at St. Thomas Moore. He's got a chance to be an all-state quarterback. He's, he's doing a great job. I don't know if you uh, talked to Tom lately, but I, he's got to be having a ball. His grandson's doing great. Oh, I'm quite sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, he was an Indian fan. His team went to the World Series this year, so he's having quite a year. The Ohio had a quite a quite a, uh, a good year, and uh, living in Columbus brought back memories. You know, just like coming back here. Mm-hmm. But I basically, I grew up here. I came here when I was 18 years old. I didn't know a lot about the world, and but I still say my roots are here. But I have roots in Ohio too. Right. So. Uh, that's the best of both worlds. How important is it to you personally? I got a chance to speak to her again when uh, Coach Shipley was put into the UL, the first coach ever put into the UL Hall of Fame because they some younger people got him to change that old rule about coaches can't go in. But the, I can remember talking with Coach Shipley, I don't know, probably 20 years ago on a radio show, and, and you could just tell that burden that he still had. And how important is it to you personally to know that before he passed away, that burden, that bitterness kind of left him, and talking again to his wife, how important going to the Hall of Fame, the, the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, after the all the sports writers in North Louisiana blocked it for years and years and years, and then finally that happened, and then now he's the first coach in, to, in the UL Hall of Fame. To know that, all, you know, it, you never lose all that bitterness, but a lot of it's gone, and there was a piece that he had before he died. How important is that whole process at the end to you? Like I told Steve, I, I, I have to take my personal feelings out of it and just be glad that it happened Yeah, and uh, not worry about the other stuff because we, we can't do anything about the other stuff. But we can move on by him getting into it now and, and grow from that. It, it, because it would have been difficult had those steps not been taken to, to to have all of the past still part of the future like you were talking, don't, don't you think? Yes. And uh, like I said, you got to embrace the past. If you don't remember the past, 
you, you're not going to have a future. Tell, tell us about, I uh, heard y'all talking about the players from today. One of the things that's going on with this team right now, and we'll see how time plays on, but they don't have that quote, quote, number one score on this year's squad. You obviously were a number one score. And I went back in, the, in my lifetime, Cajun basketball, very few years did they have a season uh, where they didn't have that number one score that you know to kind of rally around. I, 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 do you think how important do you think it's going to be to come up with that, or do you think you can win with a bunch of guys, you know, around twelve, ten, twelve, thirteen points a game? You can if they're all superstars. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> if not, you're going to have to have somebody that takes the lead and is that's going to average twenty, twenty one. I think the the. The era of 36 points and 35 points and 40 points is over. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, those were the glory days. Right. There were a lot of people like Calvin Murphy, Pistol Pete, Rick Mount, uh, Johnny Newman. Uh, we're like uh, the old gunfight. <laughs> yes. <The> old gun <laughs> you know, they're not going to happen again, but yeah. we're not going to be forgotten. So. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you... Um... Do you ever how how often do you get to just think about those days or do you just you leave that in the past and in events like this and when you have reunions do you really get to think about them I leave it in the past but uh like I said you know people in Columbus Ohio they're they're loyal and friends and they bring it up whenever they see somebody else going to the Hall of Fame and and basketball Hall of Fame college basketball Hall of Fame they bring it up and then I'll discuss it a little bit but I leave that up to the good Lord. So, Now, who all is going to be here? Have you talked to anyone since you've been in town, like old teammates or, you know, people Not you knew, old fans you knew and, and all that? I bumped into a couple of people. Uh, Dave Metters took me to uh, Don Seafood, uh, and uh, I bumped into a couple of people, and I met uh, uh, Kay Montclaw's wife on the airplane and she <laughs> shook my hand and this lady was sitting by me and said, you must be somebody special. I said, we're all special. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, the, the, tonight you're going to sign autographs and, and sign it. autographs. And I just found out that, uh, one of my good friends and one of the people that were responsible for me to come here, Peyton Towns is going to be there, so I can't wait to see and talk to him so we could tell a few lies <laughs> and reminisce about old times. How much, we were talking earlier about rivalries. Um, you know, I, I was probably at a lot of these games when you played. I was like five and six years old, so I don't remember a great deal about them. But when Big Dave was here, he would always talk about tech. Tech games in Blackham is was that the team that you kind of hated or loved to beat the most, or 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 who was the team that you loved to beat the most? All of them. <laughs> I, I, I didn't discriminate against none. Of them. Uh, but the Tech rivalry, the, I think Magnese was in there. You had to put them in there. But the Louisiana Tech thing was always special because they always had good teams. Mm -hmm. So we were always one or two in the conference. So. That just makes for a rivalry itself. We were talking about kids earlier, and um, it amazes me sometimes that, you know, that there are kids at the high school level and college level, and it's like they, they have this opportunity and they mess it up because they're worried about this or that instead of taking advantage. Do you ever think back on your career and said, man, as great as I was or as great as we were as a team, if we'd have just maybe done this or had a little more, done this a little more, this a little more, we would have been even better? All the time. I mean, if uh, there's always room for improvement. So, and uh, if you understood the importance of discipline and all the things now that you didn't maybe when, when as a high school player or a college player, uh, a lot of us would have, a lot of y'all would have been even better probably than you already were. I, well, I'm not going to say better, right? But we would have had a better understanding of what we were trying to do. You know, you would take 18, 19-year-old kids. Most of them were superstars on their team. And then you had to blend that together. And those are the type things that I, you know, would have done better. Or I'm not going to say I would have shot less. But <laughs> I at least would have thought about it, though. <laughs> so one of the things that people that are a little younger than me who have heard the stories 
at some of the main players, what are the things that they just, because they never saw it, and because, you know, I remember watching some games uh, on television, but again, I was really young. What is the thing that we don't get about some of the players, how good they were or how good y'all were, that we'll never really understand because we didn't watch it? I really feel uh, that Roy Ebron probably got uh, the short end of the stick because a lot of people thought he was lazy and, and he wasn't. It was just that he was all legs, and once he fell on the ground, yeah, it took him a while to get up. Mm-hmm. And so I, 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 you know, I didn't realize that myself until I got a little older. But I knew he wasn't lazy because I practiced with him every day. Right. But I think he got a, a bad rap. And then you know, people have put, they put more expectations on you than they do on themselves, especially when you're playing sports. And we're all human, so. Uh, but I think really Roy Ebron got the short end of the stick. Was he? I mean, I just see pictures of him. I'm like, look at this guy. He was an unbelievable looking athlete, and 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 he probably could have scored a lot more points, but you had a, a, on a different team, and he could rebound like like crazy. So, I mean, he as high up as he is, he he might have been underrated, like you're saying. Uh, definitely, and I think. You know, that's why I say you don't average 36 points by yourself. I mean, you know, it takes the whole team for you to, for them to want to give you the ball to set the picks and all that. Right. And a lot of people didn't see him doing that, but he did that. Yeah. What, what, tell me about a few of the other players that maybe we just don't appreciate because of our lack of knowledge of them. I think uh, all in all, though, Lafayette had had knowledgeable fans. Yeah. And I think they really realized – that we did have a good team, and I, I don't think they really underestimated too many people. The um, um, I was a big fan, and when I was in high school, the early '80s, you might have been doing radio by then with Don. But um, you know, the the Graylin Warner, Dion Brown, Drexel Allen, a little bit later, the, the, those days, the, the the game was a little different by then. But what were your impressions of that era? Uh. It was different for me. Yeah, uh, that was the, the the sign of the changes of what was going to come. Mm-hmm. You know, people were used to us scoring a hundred points, and then they would maybe scoring eighty points. Right, but they were still had a good product, and uh, the change is just like myself. I mean, I had to change, and I said, "Well, why did he, sh- he shoot that shot? Well, why did he do this, or why did he do that?" I became a critic, <laughs> and I had to stop that. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to realize that. You know, just like I couldn't be a Jerry West, they can't be an Andrew Tony or Bo Lamar or Roy Ebron or Peyton Towns. And they're in their own element and their coach's philosophy. Because you knew how tough it is in the NBA and you knew where he came from, um, how much did you appreciate or enjoy watching, even though his injury kind of cut short Andrew Tony's career a little bit, his success in the NBA? Oh, to me, like anybody that comes from the University of Louisiana Lafayette, I got to remember not to say USL. Right. Uh, anytime they enjoy success, we all enjoy success. So that's how I look at it. Well, I, it was a treat. I didn't. Steve called me yesterday and said this was going to happen. So appreciate good seeing you again. Uh, thank you for coming back and uh, enjoy uh, the little time with Peyton Randy, and the other friends tonight. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you very much.